Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Kevin Wallace again, and we're on phase two of your Cisco CERT success path. Just as a refresher, we began with what I called phase or stage zero. That was looking at your IT career success blueprint. There we did a bunch of goal setting. We talked about how to advance in our careers, how to start maybe an IT consulting company on the side, how to excel in an IT interview, how to create an IT resume, a seven-step strategy for preparing for any Cisco exam. Those are some of the foundational skills we need. And then we got technical in our previous video where we took a look at our first phase of the success path, and that was getting CompTIA's Network Plus certification. And we actually taught quite a bit of content from the Network Plus curriculum. Now here in our second phase, we're going to take a look at getting Cisco's CCNA routing and switching certification. And this video is going to be a bit different than the prior video where we're teaching technical content because here there is so much contained in CCNA route switch. And by the way, there is a bit of overlap between Network Plus and CCNA route switch. But I thought we would focus in this video on exam strategies. How do you get ready for the exam? What's on the exam? One of the first things you need to do is to make a decision which track you're going to follow, which path. One option is you can take two exams. You can take the ICND-1 exam. If you pass that exam, that gets you your CCENT, your CCENT certification. And then you can take a second exam, ICND-2, and that's going to give you your CCNA routing and switching certification. So that's the two-step approach. Or you might go for what I call the one and done approach, going directly for your CCNA route switch in one exam. And a common question I get is, which path should I choose? Here's my general recommendation. In general, I say, if you have two years or more of experience with Cisco Gear, personally, I would go for the one and done. I would take the single exam and just knock it out in one exam. If you have less than two years of experience with Cisco Gear, that's where I would do the two-step approach. And when you're registering for these exams, here are the exam numbers. If you take ICND-1's exam, that's 100-105. ICND-2 is 200-105. Or the composite exam, you take this one exam and you've got your CCNA route switch, that's 200-125. Now let's take a look at some study strategies to get ready for this exam, which is a quite challenging exam. First of all, you need to get to know the topics, what's on the exam, and I'm going to give you some links where you can download some PDFs and get really, really acquainted with the topics on the exam. And we need to schedule our study time. I always say, what gets scheduled gets done. I know personally, if I just have an intention of learning something someday, that someday may never come. But if I put it on my calendar, that's when it gets done. So we want to schedule out our study time. And I want us to get our hands dirty. And what I mean by getting our hands dirty is get some experience with some lab gear so we can practice some of the concepts that we're learning. First up, though, let's take a look at the exam topics. If we take the ICND-1 exam by itself, here are the broad categories that Cisco tells us we'll encounter on the exam. I'll not read all of these out, but I think you can see there is going to be some overlap with what you've already learned in the Network Plus certification. Some of the basic network fundamentals like how routers work, how switches work. IP addressing will be there as well. Then in ICND-2, you go a bit deeper in some of those very same topics. You go deeper into LAN switching, talking about things like spanning tree protocol. You go deeper into routing technologies. You get into routing with OSPF in multiple areas and EIGRP and even BGP, believe it or not, on the CCNA route switch exam. You'll learn about different WAN technologies different services that you might have running in your infrastructure, and some troubleshooting and maintenance recommendations. If you go for the one and done exam, that's exam 200-125, here are the weightings that Cisco tells us on their website. And you're really covering the same topics here that you covered in the individual ICND-1 and ICND-2 exams. So you're really not avoiding any topics by taking the two-step approach versus the one and done approach. But I said I wanted to give you some PDFs, and I've created some links to PDFs on Cisco's website where you can download the exact topics on each of these exams. Here you see the links for ICND-1, ICND-2, and the CCNA route switch exam. You might want to pause the video and jot down those URLs. And now let's talk about scheduling our study time. And your mileage is going to vary. This is just a hypothetical study strategy. Modify this as necessary for your particular situation. 
But in my situation, I might say, you know, I'm going to study for this exam and I think I can commit to eight hours of study every week. But I need to define exactly where are those eight hours coming from. Well, maybe I could get up early. Maybe I could study one hour a day, Monday through Friday. On Saturday, not a lot going on. Maybe three hours on Saturday morning, I could carve that out. Maybe take Sunday off. That would give me eight hours per week of study time. And if I prefer to watch video on demand training for my study versus reading a book, I might watch the VODs, the video on demand videos, about 40 hours. Now, the video on demand series that, that I created that covers everything you need to know for the exam, and I'm going to be giving you a discount offer for that at the end of this video, it runs, I think, about 25 hours. But I added some extra time here because as you're watching the videos, you're probably going to be pausing and taking some notes along the way. And we're also going to talk in this video about how to get some hands-on experience, how to get some lab experience, and maybe we commit 20 hours to hands-on practice. And after we do all that, I suggest that we go back and review the topics that Cisco says are going to be on the exam. And maybe I spend another 12 hours on those weak spots. I read more about OSPF version 3 and I lab it up. And grand total, it looks like it's going to take me about 72 hours to prepare for this exam. Now, I've already defined that I'm willing to spend eight hours per week in study, so let's just take 72 hours, divide by eight hours per week, and that's going to give me a nine-week study plan. Using this approach, I should be able to prepare for the exam in nine weeks. And I recommend that we schedule this as far in advance as we can. It sort of puts a line in the sand that we're aiming towards. Now, I realize that some certification centers don't allow you to register too far in advance. You might have to wait two or three weeks in advance, but I encourage you to register early on. That's going to give you that little bit of accountability knowing that that exam date's coming up. Now, by the way, there is a safety net if you feel like you're really not prepared. I think it's like a day or two advance notice you can give the uh, testing center and you can just reschedule for a later date. But for me, I know that it makes me work that little extra bit harder if I know my exam date is looming out there. And another advantage of registering early is you get a better selection of exam locations and exam times to better meet your schedule. Now let's talk about how do we get our hands dirty? How do we get some uh, hands-on practice? One option is to use some non-production equipment at your company, with your company's approval, of course. I've done that when I was preparing for my first CCA in writing and switching. I remember a person that worked at my former employer. He allowed me to use some of my former employer's equipment to build a home lab to practice. You might want to invest and buy your own home lab. That's going to be a more expensive option, but some people like to work with the physical gear, and there are certainly benefits to doing that, to actually opening up the routers and understanding how you install modules and how you install DRAM and things like that. How do you add flash storage? And while I think that might be a good approach for maybe some higher level certifications, at the CCNA level, I really think you're going to be fine if you just stick with a software-based solution, specifically an emulator or a simulator. Let's talk about a few different options here. An emulator is actually running Cisco IOS, and the software on your computer is emulating the operation of a Cisco router or switch or adaptive security appliance or whatever device you're using. And one option for you, if you want to use an emulator where you can put in whatever Cisco command you want, Cisco IOS command, and it's probably going to be executed correctly because you're actually running Cisco IOS software, one option for you is the Cisco Learning Labs out at the uh, Cisco Learning Network. I've given you some shortcut links there where you can uh, go check those out. Now here, when you buy access to these labs, you get a fixed topology for the different labs. So you're not gonna be able to create your own topology and say, well, let's put a switch here and let's put a router here and maybe another switch here. No, you're gonna be given a topology to work with, but one of the great things about this option is that it teaches you, it's not just an open sandbox where you're left to your own devices. It actually teaches you and instructs you to walk through a series of tasks. And when you purchase this, what you're actually purchasing is a block of hours that you have access to this gear. And that block of hours has to be used within a certain amount of time. So maybe, for example, I'm just making this up. Maybe we have 50 hours of access, but those 50 hours of access have to be used within six months. That's the type of thing you're getting when you go to the Cisco Learning Labs. Another option for an emulator is Cisco's Viral, the Virtual Internet Routing Lab. 
And I've given you a link on screen to go to Cisco's viral page if you want to check that out. Now, at the time of this recording, it's about $200 US to purchase viral for a year. You get a year's access to the software. It goes out and checks the licensing server every so often, so you're not able to use it more than that amount of time. But you can renew every year. That's typically what I do. And one of the great things about Viral is you can create your own topologies. You're not limited to a fixed topology like you are with the Cisco Learning Labs. However, the downside here is that this is a sandbox environment. You are left to your own devices where you're not really given any instruction about create this. But if you've got another reference, if you're watching my training videos, for example, and I use a certain topology, you can recreate a very similar topology using something like Viral and kind of walk through it on your own. Another option you might want to consider, though, is a simulator. And a very popular simulator out there is Cisco's Packet Tracer. And I've given you a link on screen to go sign up for Packet Tracer. When you go to this URL, and if they've changed it, just search for Packet Tracer Download. But when you go to this URL, you're actually signing up for a Packet Tracer course, it looks like. And that's the way you get access to Packet Tracer. Now, the course is free. This is free software, but you have to register for the course in order to get access to Packet Tracer. And this is a simulator, meaning it's not really running Cisco iOS. It acts like it. Many of the commands work identical to iOS, but it's not perfect. It's not exactly Cisco iOS that you're running. It does do a really nice job though. It shows you LED lights on the front of the routers or switches. It shows you what the modules look like on the backs of the routers. And since it's free, I recommend that everybody go get this. It's a great little tool to play around with and lab some things up in. Another simulator you might want to consider is from Pearson. It's the Pearson Network Simulator. And here's a link on screen where you can go check that out if you want to. And for CCNA preparation, this is actually my recommendation. The reason is this has, I think it's like over 200 labs. You can go check their website, but I think it's over 200 labs that have been scripted out for you. Now, like Cisco Learning Labs, you're dealing with fixed topologies. You're not going to be able to build your own topology, but it walks you through a ton of lab exercises and you're getting feedback about what you're doing and it really teaches you what you need to know for the CCNA exam. So personally, if I were preparing for the CCNA, I think Pearson's Network Simulator is a great way to go. Now let's sum up what we've talked about in this video regarding getting ready for the exam. We said the first thing is you need to get to know the exam topics. And I gave you some links where you can go print off some PDFs of exact exam topics. You want to schedule your study time and also schedule your exam date as far in the future as you possibly can. And we talked about some different strategies for getting your hands dirty, whether that was using physical gear that we borrowed or purchased, or maybe we do a rack rental, or maybe we use an emulator or a simulator. And at the end of each of these Cisco Cert Success Path videos, I like to give you a discount on a product that's going to move you towards this certification or this phase of your success path. And I mentioned earlier that I've created a video training course that covers everything you need to know for the CCNA Writing and Switching exam. And it's called the CCNA Writing and Switching Complete Video Course. It's got over 25 hours of instruction, over 300 videos. You get quizzes, there are interactive exercises, you get practice exams. And uh, that's sold by Pearson IT Certification. It's also available through the Cisco Press website. I've given you a shortcut link down there on screen, kwtrain.com slash CCNA course. That'll take you directly to it. By the way, that is an affiliate link, so I get a little bit back if you purchase using my link. It doesn't cost you anymore, but, but I get a little commission for your, using my link. And if you do use this link, as you're checking out, give the discount code Wallace50. That's going to save you 50% off of the list price. All right, that's going to do it for phase two of our Cisco CERT success path. I'll see you back in the next video for phase three.